Have you ever been in a chat room and heard people talking about coins? Or maybe you were reading an article about coins and you heard some terms and some words used that you weren't sure what they meant? Or maybe you're just new to coin collecting and you want to learn more? Well, we're going to go through some of those today and explain what they mean, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, CFA here with you. Thank you for joining us today for this video and I hope that you're having a great day. Now, we wanted to put together a video explaining some very basic coin collecting and numismatic terminology that is designed for you beginning collectors. Now, our goal here at CFA is to continue to educate and to encourage others to join this fantastic hobby that we love so much. Now, if people find this kind of video useful, then we will do more editions of it later with like expanded terminology, get more in depth on some other wording. Now, I want you guys to please leave your comments down below. We'd love to hear your opinion on this video and any insight and questions that you all might have. Now, we put this together in alphabetical order so you can easily go back later and hear coin collecting term definitions again if you would like. And so without further ado, we're going to jump right in to some basic coin terminology. All right, let's start right off with the term business strike. A coin that is produced at the mint as a business strike means it is a coin struck with the purpose of being sent out into circulation to the general public for use in commerce meaning to be spent for purchases by consumers. These are regular issue coins generally produced in large quantities and the term business strike distinguishes these coins from those struck primarily for collectors such as proof and commemorative coins. All right, clad coins. Now I'm sure many of you have heard this term before and we here at Coins for Amateurs actually have a video that we did a while back that goes more in depth on clad coins. Now clad refers to a coin that is made up of multiple layers of metal. Often this can be determined by looking at the edge of the coin like in these pictures. Where non-clad coins like silver are all one color and clad coins show more than one color or layer. Now you're typically going to see this more on US coins than you are on foreign coins. Alright, contact marks. Contact marks on a coin are scratches, dings, dents, and other blemishes that can affect the condition and the grade of the coin. Now, these marks are often caused by other coins while in jars, pockets, cash registers, bags being delivered from the mint facility, things such as that. Now you can even sometimes see readed edge impressions on the coins from other coins that were in bags with them when they're tossed around by mint workers and others on their way to banks and other facilities. All right, cud. A cud on a coin will resemble a blob above the field of the coin and involves the rim as seen on this Lincoln scent right here. Now, cuds are actually the result of a break in the die. An actual piece of the die is missing and they can come in various shapes and sizes and depending on the location, they can also cover up the design and inscription on the coin. These are mint errors and they can sell for a premium over face value, especially with more dramatic examples. Die. A coin die is a hardened tool used by the mint to strike blank planchets and form the images and inscriptions to create the coin in a die press. Now, one way that I've heard many people describe this is to think of the die as the mint's cookie cutter in the shape of the desired coin, and the blank planchet is the cookie dough that the coin is then cut out of. All right, die crack. A die crack is a mint error on a coin. Now, we just talked about cuds, and cuds are actually created by a piece of the die breaking off. Now, on a die crack, you want to imagine that there's actually a crack, there's a literal crack running through the die. Now, when it strikes the blank planchet, that crack will fill with the metal, leaving behind a raised line like on this Lincoln scent that you see right here. Now, this is a die crack error, and these can also sell for more than face value, especially, like I said on the cuds, on the more dramatic examples. 
Okay, error coins. Now, not to be confused with rare varieties, an error coin is one that was manufactured incorrectly at the mint. It can be the result of unintentional actions by mint employees, deterioration or malfunction of equipment, or simply accidental. Common errors you may find are clipped planches, rotated dies, die cracks, cuds, and off-center coins. So just, that's just a few. All right, error coins are highly sought after by collectors and can potentially be valued much higher than face value depending on the error itself and the rarity of the coin and the condition of the coin. Grade. All right, the grade of a coin is the designation given to it based on its condition and that is a key factor in determining its value. Now, there are several professional grading companies out there with the most notable being PCGS and NGC. Uh, typically, grades are assigned using what's called the Sheldon Scale, and that goes from a 1 through a 70, with 70 being a perfect specimen. Key date is a common term you will hear with coin collectors, and key date coins are the coins in a particular series that collectors strive to get because they are harder to obtain than the others. For example, here is a list of mintages, meaning a total number of coins produced for the Lincoln Wheat Cent series from 1924 through 1929. Now you can see that the 24D and the 26S had far less coins produced than the other years and mints. That makes these two here key dates harder to get the ones that everybody is trying to find in especially good condition. All right, mint mark. When you hear people talk about the mint mark on a coin, they are talking about the inscription, which is typically a letter that is on the coin and it tells you where that coin was minted, meaning where was it produced. Now, for example, on the nickel shown here, the D means that that nickel was minted in Denver. The P is one that was minted in Philadelphia. And that S mint means that it was minted in San Francisco. Mintage. Now, we heard this uh, term previously in some other terminology examples, but the mintage of a coin is simply the number of coins that were produced. This is often broken down to a coin series and facility minted at, such as the Buffalo Nickel and Shield Scent mintages that I have shown here. NIFC. Now, oftentimes in the numismatic community, you will hear the term NIFC, especially with coin roll hunters, we hear it all the time. Now, it stands for not intended for circulation. Now, earlier we discussed business strikes, which are coins that are meant for commerce and circulation. NIFC is the rest of the minted coins that are meant for collectors, such as proof coins, commemorative coins, and those that are packaged in myth sets. All right, a planchet. A blank planchet is a round, plain metal disc that is placed into a die press and it is struck with the dies that we talked about earlier to imprint designs and inscriptions on it, which then transforms that planchet into, yes, a coin. Okay, proof strike. Now, earlier we talked about business struck coins. Now, a proof struck coin means that it was intended for collectors and numismatists and not intended for circulation. Now the term proof refers to the process that that coin was manufactured in, does not refer to the condition of that coin. Now proof coins are double struck under a higher pressure than business struck coins are. And the dies are often treated in such a way that it gives the designs a frosted appearance and the fields of that coin will have a mirror like finish. Okay, rare variety. Now, rare varieties are one of our favorites here at Coins for Amateurs because we are always looking for them in our change and when we coin roll hunt. Now, a coin variety is some change in the intended design of a specific coin series or type. Now, the rare variety would be the coins that exhibit that change and are hard to find. 
Now, there are intentional changes to coins that create rare varieties, such as we recently did a video on a 1970 S cent, where a few examples were minted with a small date. Now, they're hard to find, hence rare variety. Or the 1992 cent, which we've also done a video on, where a few examples have been found with a close AM 1993 reverse, and they are very hard to find also a rare variety. There are also some unintentional mistakes that create rare varieties, such as repunched mint marks and double dies. Now, rare varieties are highly sought after by many collectors, not just us here at CFA, and they often can have a value far greater than face value of the coin. As a matter of fact, oftentimes these rare varieties are worth much more than silver and other things that people look for when they're coin roll hunting. So rare variety is something as a coin roll hunter or coin collector that you're probably going to want to get familiar with. So there you have it. There's our little go at some basic coin terminology for you beginners out there, you new coin collectors and numismatists, or maybe maybe even there's something out there that some of you have been in it for a little while, you just weren't quite sure what it meant. I hope this helps out. Let me know if it does. I'm more than willing and happy to do another edition of this with some more terminology. If, uh, if everybody would like. So like I said, let me know down in the comments. Let me know your opinions. I wanna hear some insight. We love the back and forth discussion. It, it really helps us out. And from what I've, feedback I've gotten from a lot of people, it helps them out as well. All right, so thank you all for watching Coins for Amateurs. We can't thank you enough for all your support. Again, remember we have some other videos, uh, educational coin videos that maybe you can find, learn some new varieties. So again, Thank you, and as always, keep checking that change.